around the world, humans are leaving their mark on the planet. Today the global population is estimated at 7.3 billion, and counting. As its number continues to grow, so does the toll on the environment. It's now at the stage that our influence on the environment is so large that it's pushed our world towards a state of mass extinction. There's been only five mass extinctions in Earth's history, and all are associated with volcanic eruptions and asteroid collisions that have had a worldwide impact. Unlike these events, there's no natural disaster behind the sixth mass extinction. Instead, it's driven purely by the human population. Human activities like habitat destruction, over-exploitation, and climate change are the leading issues causing biodiversity to decline. Experts are estimating that a large range of species and ecosystems have been, and are likely, to be affected across the world in the future. In the past five mass extinction events, over 75% of all species were lost each time. It's expected that if conservation efforts aren't stepped up, a similar scenario could unfold. So what should we conserve? And how do we reduce the impact humans are having on the environment? When it comes to ecosystem health, research has shown it's not about the number of species we conserve, but which species we conserve. All species play a different and unique role in the habitat they live in, and have different contributions towards ecosystem functioning. Some species are more important than others in the contribution they make. This is where the idea of keystone species comes from. Keystones have a unique and very important role in the environment that is critical in ensuring the ecosystem continues to function and be productive. While not every species is a keystone, each species belongs to a different functional group that has a unique contribution towards ecosystem functioning. It's been argued that conservation efforts need to focus on conserving these functionally important species. However, ecosystems that become disturbed by human activities often lose functional diversity. This is seen in agricultural systems, timber plantations and polluted environments. Wherever humans have left a mark on the landscape, ecosystems that have lost functional diversity don't run the same way and are vulnerable to invasion by exotic species and possibly even to ecosystem collapse. The Great Barrier Reef is one of the most highly diverse ecosystems in the world, although there are only a few key species that are irreplaceable in the function they provide. This includes the parrotfish that tend to the reef by grazing on algae. No other species is able to prevent algae from smothering the reef and killing corals. Parrotfish are truly keystone species within these systems. Although hunting has jeopardised the persistence of parrotfish, populations are being overfished, and this is threatening not only parrotfish, but all the species that rely and live on the reef. While conservation efforts for the Great Barrier Reef exist, they are not extensive, with only a third of the reef protected from fishing. Parrotfish are an attractive target for spearfishers, and given the importance of parrotfish, more protection seems warranted. Conservation programs that focused on reinforcing the protection of the species could help to protect the system from collapsing. By approaching conservation issues by focusing on keystone species, a more comprehensive and effective approach could be given to protecting ecosystems. Offering protection to highly diverse systems also pays dividends. Australia's Great Barrier Reef and tropical rainforests are major tourist attractions and also contain species that are important for medical research. Saving functional diversity is therefore also beneficial for society and our economy.